parallelograms. All right, our objective today is to be able to find the area of a parallelogram. So by the end of this, you should be able to find the area of any parallelogram. Uh, we have our area formulas. So if we have a rectangle like this one, we have length and width, and the area is found by A is equal to L times W. Now for a parallelogram, think of that as a, remember it's two sets of parallel sides, so instead of a rectangle, we take the section on the, the pink section on the left, we can slide it over to the right, and we still basically have a rectangle. It's just been kind of tilted. So to do that, we're going to have the base times the height. So area for a parallelogram is the base times the height equals area. So let's find the area of this figure below. What's the base? What's the height? Well, the base and the height, the base is 9, the height is 5. So we have 9 times 5, which gives us 45 square inches. Now there's a couple of different ways to write this. You can write it like this. You can shorten it up a little bit and say 45 and then the abbreviations for square and inches, that's acceptable. Or you can say 45 inches squared and use the exponent 2 and then the abbreviation for inches, that's acceptable. What's not acceptable is to say 45 squared inches. It has to be inches squared. So you can say it squ 45 squared inches, but you can't write it with the squared next to the 45. That means something completely different, so don't do that. Now it's very important that the base and height are always perpendicular to each other. So you're going to usually look for that little square that indicates that it's a right angle. So base is pretty easy, and then you have your height. They always have to be perpendicular. So this one, it looks a little weird, but the ba that's the base, even though it's on the side, and there's our height. Now the base can be on either side, it doesn't matter. Whatever works best for you, or whatever they give you. So sometimes they'll have the height on the outside, and that's okay as well, as long as it's perpendicular to the base. That's the important thing. The height and the base have to be perpendicular to each other. Or it can be on the inside. So would you take a moment and pause the video and find the answer to these two problems. Or if you want to do just the first one and check your work, that's fine. If you want to use a calculator at this point, I have no problem with that. I'm not going to ask you to show the work, but you are going to need to show the steps. So I want to know what the base is, what the height, and so on. Okay, hopefully you've done at least one, and let's do that. So remember, area is equal to base times height. What you need to show on your paper is you'll need to show that A is equal to 28 times 18. I'll need to see that on your assignment. You multiply those two together, you'll get 504 square feet, or feet squared. So that's what I'll need to see. Basically that one line, A is equal to 28 times 18 equals 504 square feet. So again, I want to emphasize that's what's on the, I want to see in your assignment. So if you haven't done number two, pause this video and do that. If you've done number two, then let's continue on. Okay, so area is equal to base times height. So we have A is equal to 8 times 14, which is equal to 112 units squared. Notice that I said units because I don't know what the, if it's feet, centimeters, millimeters, miles, who knows. So um, I put units to show that it is area. Would you try three and four, please? So we'll start out with 12 times 9. That's going to be equal to 108 units squared. Number four. Make sure that you're getting the base and the height here. So it's going to be 13 times 2.5. And 
and that's going to be equal to 32.5 units squared. Now, you got to be careful here because see that you have mixed units. So it's easiest to change the bigger unit down to the smaller unit. So one foot is equal to 12 inches. Go down, that's a lot easier. So I've got 12 times 8, which is 96 inches squared. 0.40 meters is 40 centimeters. So we'll have 40 times 16, which is 640 centimeters squared. Now, if you have an irregular shape like this, make it into a regular shape. So now I have a big rectangle, but I need to get rid of that smaller rectangle. What can we do? Well, we could take the big, find the area of the big rectangle, find the area of the small rectangle, take that away, and that'll give us just the shaded area. There's other ways to do this, but this is the way I like, so whatever works best for you. So the big rectangle, the area is equal to 65 times 30. That's 1,950 meters squared. The small rectangle will be, uh, what do we got, uh, 15 meters times 45 meters, which will be 675 meters squared. So I'll take 1,950, take away the small rectangle, which will be 675, and that leaves me 1,275 meters squared for the area of the shaded part. Okay. Find the height of the parallelogram. So here we know the base and we know the area, but we don't know the height. So if I know, plug in what I know, I have 135 times 15, or sorry, equals 15 times the height. Well, since it's timesing, we need to do the opposite and divide by 15, and we get a height of 9 inches. And that's it. I want to emphasize it's okay to use calculators on the assignment. However, you have to show the steps. So I want to know what the base and the height are, and then multiply them. Make sure that you also label your answers showing that it is area. Thank you very much.